In the early 1780s in Western Massachusetts, farmers were struggling to make ends meet due to high debts. Even though the farmers were broke and there was no money in circulation, businesses demanded immediate payment on goods. Unlike other states, Massachusetts didn't pay any pro debtor laws, causing the sheriff to seize farms and put those who couldn't pay taxes in jail. This left farmers to take matters into their own hands. At first, many farmers peacefully drafted a document of grievances and proposed reforms. When ignored, Captain Joseph Hines led a few hundred men to block the courthouse in Northampton. This act caused many more just like it. No more no, 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 debt! No more no, 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 no. With conflict inevitable, the farmers needed someone to organize them. Enter Daniel Shea. Being a farmer in Shellam, as well as having fought at Bunker Hill, Daniel Shea understood the problem and had war experience. At first, Shea led protests on courts. In September 1786, Shea led 600 men to shut down the court in Springfield, but failed after encountering General William Shepard. Escalating the situation even more was an incident where militia assaulted a poor farmer and his family. Worried about the rising situation, Governor James Bodian hired an army led by General William Shepard and General Benjamin Lincoln. Under the organization and leadership of Shea, the rebels created a plan to attack Springfield Arsenal in search of weapons for their rebellion. On January 25, 1797, Shea and two other leaders led 1,200 men, armed with guns, pitchforks and clubs, in an attack on Springfield Arsenal. Luke Dye and Eli Parsons were the two other generals. Dye was supposed to come from the north with 400 men and Parsons from Berkshires with 600 men. Unfortunately for the rebellion, General Shepard predicted the assault and waited at the arsenal, with Lincoln on his way with additional defense. When Shea arrived, shots were being exchanged between the two armies, resulting in two rebels dead and 20 wounded. Scattering, the rebels fled to Chicopee. Retreat! To Chicopee! <laughs> to intercept reinforcements, Lincoln sent troops up to Connecticut to encounter Day. Having failed, Daniel Shea fled to Vermont. I decided to create this movie because of the importance it has on the creation of our country and the impact it still has on our daily lives through the Constitution. After the destruction of the uprising in Springfield, Massachusetts, many people were influenced by its results. Federalists like Alexander Hamilton and George Washington were fueled by the events, advocating a strong federal government and the diminishing of states' rights. Nationalists used the rebellion to heighten paranoia, and George Washington was convinced enough by their arguments to come out of retirement and take part in the Constitutional Convention, where he was elected the first president of the United States. This movie was just really fun to make, and I like it just because the history it embodies and like what happened afterwards. You know, there was a new governor that pardoned all, most of the farmers that were going to be executed for their crimes. And, you know, things just really turned upwards for Massachusetts and taxes. You know, I was a minor actor in this whole project, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very interesting, and I thought it portrayed the events very well. The only con of the whole thing is just the ketchup that covered my entire face. That was, that was pretty bad. Oh. <laughs>